Hi, you Mark. Super session as always out on the range. Uh, just a quick recap on the key points that we covered. Uh, same thing really, we've just got to control what's going on from P4 to P6. The, the shaft's nowhere near as much in front of you as it used to be. Still a little bit of a steepening of the shaft, a little bit too steep. P4 to P5. Then the extension of the hip slides better, which keeps the shaft in a little bit more at P6. Very inline position, requiring quite a lot of downward to give you any outward, and we're already quite steep on it on occasion anyway. So we could do with that shaft being in just a touch more, do beg your pardon, uh, being in a touch more at six to suit what you're trying to do with the golf club. So trying to get the shaft in a little bit more at six. It would take you back up to four. Arm plane is quite high, so we needed to look at that. The change of direction, and we know what happens on that one. Three releases a little bit too soon. You start to flex forward a little bit too quick with that right knee. Uh, again, that's stuff we've visited in the past, and you know what to do on that. I much prefer you to try and isolate this change of direction, and it's got to be number three. What is number three doing from P4? to P5 and I like this move that you're making here uh, from the slightly skewed angle super position at the top right elbow rotating inward slightly number three in this instance because it's a drill loading ever so slightly in turn shallowing out the shaft but when you do practice that, make sure that we only practice it from P4 to P5. We don't really want that trend to continue from P5 to P6. If it did, the left shoulder would come up, the head would come off the wall, and we'd be very in and open at P6. Giving you the feeling, quite rightly so, that every shot is going to go wailing off to the right and never ever draw back. So quite important that when you're working this in, it's from P4 to P5 and we've used it in the past, we've used the image of Garcia, you can see it has that look about it as you change direction there. So that would tidy up P4 to P5. The other thing we did during the backswing was we put pressure point 5, we want to increase it but we want to increase it on the underside of the right arm. As we do that, we can see that the top of the backswing position tightens up somewhat, the arm swing becomes shorter, it becomes a little bit more in sympathy with what the shoulder plane is doing and that in turn, I mean you didn't do it particularly well on that particular swing but that in turn will make it easier for you to work that change of direction in the as you progress other things that you can do um, you know to keep the club in at six is to in theory slide the hips more but as we discussed is it that the hips need to slide more or is it that we need to rotate less? It's a fine line, really. I mean, for me, you have a lot of you, know, you have a lot of linear movement. The left knee gets plenty out in front of the left ankle. The hip centre is plenty forward as we're coming in at P6. However, if there's excessive rotation, it's still going to pull everything out. So what we're doing here is we're going to try and hit some P9s with zero rotation. Now as you do this, the left knee is still out in front of the left ankle the same amount. The hip centre is still in the same position at P6. So nothing's changed there. But it gives the impression that there's more linear. You look at the right knee, much less flexing going on. The lead leg started to push up, bringing the hips out the forward tilt raising the belt, etc, etc, based on you having less rotation. So we stop you at P9 when the right arm is parallel with the ground. How much less of your back we can see. Shoulders haven't unwound as much. If we use the stride, just relocate that. If we use the, the sort of coral coloured stripe on your jersey there, and draw a line through it you can see that there's much less rotation coming through the golf ball so i think sometimes with yourself you get a little bit you get the lines crossed between hip slide 
and rotation. Yes, we want the hips to slide, but sometimes just calming the rotation down can help give the appearance of more linear movement. So I don't think it's that you need to slide the hips more by any stretch of the imagination. We've discussed that before, but you do need to calm that rotation down. Excessive rotation is going to pull everything out from P4 onwards. So we can we can help get that shaft in more by the change of direction, etc., etc. But even with a good change of direction, if we start to hit the rotation from P5 onwards, it's still going to get everything pulled out. So key pieces. Pressure point five, underside of the right arm to tidy up P4. Isolate the third accumulator, accumulator number three, from P4 to P5. Starting to understand the effects that that has on the shaft uh, at P6. And plenty of P9s with no rotation. I love this move through the board. Much, much better. And when we view it from down the line, looks really really nice in the follow through and the finish position that's something that you can do a lot of at a tournament that's going to help control what the third accumulator is going to do without bogging you down too much with the technicalities and i can guarantee you if you're working on that p9s with no rotation and you're doing it correctly you ain't going to see that ball start left and curve right no chance every shot's going to start right or draw Based on the footage that you sent me across from what I'm presuming was the 8th tee uh, form of the other day, that's looking so much better. I mean, we're even we're joking on the text, but we're even sniffing a touch under plane at P6, which is which are uncharted waters for you uh, this day. So things are looking good. Keep your head on. Keep focused on your tournaments. When you do go there, remember that you're going there to play. You're not going there to work on your swing. And I'm sure that things will work out for you. I'm looking forward to a good season in 2013. And I'm sure that your win is not too far around the corner. Good luck with it. Well done. Speak soon.